Welcome to The Daily for Tuesday, March 19th with Simon Borg. I'm Jason Seguini. All the stories around U.S. soccer today are coming off of that roster announcement that Jurgen Klinsmann made. And going into it, it was all about who's going to play center back, who's going to play center back. Then we hear the roster announcement, and it's who's going to play outside back. So some clues maybe, some MLSers on this roster, Tony Beltran, Justin Morrow, not guys with a ton of national team experience though, are they gonna play in these big World Cup qualifiers? But Beltran and Morrow were in the January camp, so Jurgen Klinsmann has an extended look at those two players, uh, and they've already accomplished a lot in MLS. I think they, they, they are all-star uh, caliber. Morrow made the all-star team uh, last year. Uh, so we're not talking about slouches there. And then you have options that Klinsman hinted at in his meeting with the media. Uh, we're talking about Demarcus Beasley at left back. And then Jeff Cameron, obviously, at right back. He plays right back with Stoke. So uh, it's not a hopeless case at fullback for the U.S. Yeah, just not a ton of experience when you look across the defenders on that roster. So interestingly, Carlos Bocanegra being left off this roster brought up a lot of questions. I mean, this is a guy who's a former captain of the national team. And Klinsman explained why Bocanegra's not here. He's not playing with his second division team, Racing Santander, in Spain. Uh, and I don't blame Klinsman because I think Bocanegra is at a point where in his performances you could see that uh, he was a little, he was a step slower, whether it was the injuries, whether it was just age catching up. And I think not seeing him in action doesn't allow you to for sure say that he is ready to take on Costa Rica in a must-win game. Klinsman called it a must-win game. So... I agree, you have to leave him on the side. Yeah, and I think the, this brings up the question, will Carlos Bocanegra seek a return to MLS in midseason? Because he needs to get on the field, and I think there are probably going to be some MLS teams who can use a center back at that point in the season. One other note that we have to give you from yesterday, our own Nick Fershaw is out in Colorado at the U.S. camp. He spoke to Breck Shea and had some interesting news. Yeah, Breck Shea, we know about the left foot surgery he had in November, uh, and then he went to, to Stoke, he transferred to Stoke with that injury, still carrying it. He says it still hasn't healed totally and that it still bothers him, uh, but that he's ready to play minutes if Klinsman gives him the minutes. So that's another concern. There's already a guy on the roster carrying an injury. How much can he give? All right, stay tuned to MLSsoccer.com all week for coverage of U.S. Costa Rica. Well, you can see the full list of national team call-ups on MLSsoccer.com and plenty of guys getting national team recognition this week. But that brings up the question, what teams are going to be hurt the most come MLS action this weekend? Or on the other, the other way we looked at it is, what teams are going to benefit from these call-ups? One team that's being hurt, you circle it. Real Salt Lake, five players, and they're hit at every sector of the field. Ramondo in goal, Beltran in the back, Beckerman in midfield, Saborio up top. So Dallas, that's the team they're facing. Uh, they're really favored here uh, to put on a little bit of a run here after their win uh, in the Texas Derby against Houston. Then the other team for me, San Jose, uh, they face a Seattle team without its key attacking talent. Mario Martinez, uh, Eddie Johnson, and Obafemi Martins. I think uh, San Jose has a good chance here, despite the fact they're missing two key defenders. All right, one other team, another Western Conference team who could benefit from this from what I see, and that's Colorado Rapids. They have to go to the LA Galaxy, but when you take on the LA Galaxy without their best defender, Omar Gonzalez, and their best attacker, Robbie Keane, you have a much better shot of getting some points in that game. Taking a look at this week's Castrol Index, an interesting mix here. When you look at the top five, you have every position on the field covered, and it starts with Marco DeVaio up top. And another goal scorer, number two, Jack McInerney, followed by Bill Hamid, the goalkeeper, Graham Zussi from Sporting Kansas City, uh, and lastly, George John, a defender, also scoring a goal in this one. The fact that we didn't have many goals scored uh, and players with hat tricks, it right. doesn't slant the standing, so uh, it's a real fair representation, I think. All right, from goal scorers to saves, don't miss Save of the Week on the site now. You can vote for your favorite of the saves. And, of course, Bill Hamid is on the list. Twice very impressive performance that he had against the Red Bulls. And also, Simon, it's Tuesday. That means power rankings come out, so get ready to start debating where your team is and will the Montreal Impact be at the top of that list. They should. I, uh, one other thing I should mention, Simon, the instant replay came out yesterday. What was the biggest play that you looked at? For me, it's the penalty not given to the Portland Timbers in Seattle. I think that could have been a game changer uh, with uh, John Kennedy Hurtado chopping down Ryan Johnson. To me, that one of the big pays, but there were many. All right. That's all we have for the Daily. On Tuesday, we'll be back on Wednesday with plenty more.